everybody and welcome to this guide and tutorial for the golden shot difficulty level is hard and I'm going to take you through 11 shots on how to play uh, this specific course in the golden shot and hopefully going to be able to help you get one of the chests or maybe multiply chest and you can get the bers berserker ball so first and foremost if you aren't a subscriber yet hit that subscribe button also the bell button you will get a notification every time there is a live stream or a new video coming up also if you do want to get the text guides for a specific tour or you maybe want to sign up to get them for the tournaments etc and then you can get that through patreon.com slash golf clash tommy also if you do like the video and the content we provide here on the channel take your time hit thumbs up as well thank you so much for that so okay we're gonna take a look which one are we going to play we're going to play one of the white cliffs uh, golf club which is hole number two from the recent south coast tournament this is going to require a lot of downhill adjustment which is going to be of course very interesting uh, because it's not gonna be that easy when it comes to uh, the hard one or the hard difficulty here we're going to be able to win five specific chests obsidian for the hole in one then we do have the amber chest for the yellow one and then we do have the crimson chest for the red one and the aqua chest for the light blue uh, chest and the cobalt chest for the dark blue chest we're going to play with the golden wood club all shots here no matter what type of win we're going to have in medium distance uh, with the uh, with the, an over adjustment we're going to take that just in a sec also if you do need more information or maybe there is a question i'm not answering here in this video that you're wondering about check out uh, the frequently asked questions you can get uh, to them by pressing the question mark on the top right you will get them there below okay so when it comes to the adjustment here that we're gonna make we're going to play as i said with the golden wood club every single shot medium distance with a 30% over adjustment for those of you that are using an application that is pretty easy to add to the application for those of you that are not using any type of help tool or maybe just using your mind or like brain or whatever we can call it then you played 1.8 per ring that's the same as medium distance with a 30 percent over adjustment so you decide which one of course i want to display both and so it's not that you add it together it's each for their own so either medium distance with a 30 percent over adjustment or you go with a 1.8 per ring so we're gonna start uh, after this to take a look at some landing positions here it is very important to have in mind that when we do have wind right to left this is the landing position that we're going to start with this is with spin added so i always want you to play with max side spin to the left and i'm gonna come to that later as well max side spin to the left every single time you can see here that we're having the the ball guideline pointed just by the side of the roof uh, rough there you can see the blue line there on top also at the same time we do have the half of the red ring inside rough or even easier the blue ring just there by the bunker this is for right to left win and when we then go and check the other direction now you can see i do not have that much left to right win but this is the spot that i want you to have if you do have a more as a crosswind left to right you can see a smidge of the yellow ring inside the rough with the ball guideline pointing basically two squares uh, to uh, yeah from the pin to the left with the second bounce in this case then just over the rough but the second bounce is dependent on where how much top spin we're going to use because it's going to be different depending on the wind also max left side spin on this shot as well as for every shot so last but not least we do have the one when we do have a straight win straight chain win straight head win and then we're gonna go directly at the pin max size been added to the left yellow ring just by the rough so some slight tweaks when it comes to the landing position and you know me i don't like using a different landing position for uh, for a different win but here we need to tweak a little bit the reason for that is that we're otherwise going to put ourselves too close or bouncing in the rough or bouncing into the bunker if we don't have that in mind so we're gonna start with the video now uh, and now we're gonna play with straight tailwind i'm using max side spin to the left with straight tailwind i'm using one bar top spin only and 
As you can see, if you remember landing position straight win, we do use the yellow ring just by the rough. I'm aiming, I think at least, I'm aiming a little bit too much to the right here of the pin, which logically is going to miss to the right. So, when adjusting here, I can just say why I'm using left side spin for every type of shot, even right to left wind, is because I do want to get the same type of spin with, with my ball all the time if I can. Also, that we are going to have a very, you know, like a very tight fairway for the ball to bounce on, and therefore we do need the left side spin uh, to be able to stay away from the rough there on the left. Spitfire! Spitfire to level 6! Yes! Shot number 2. Now we do have 6 uh, miles per hour right to left, 2 and a smidge top spin. As you can see here, you can see also that I'm actually using a little slight change of landing position here where I'm used in my example. And you can see as also that I'm not close to the rough there on the right. And of course, when I'm not having completely straight crosswind, I don't have to be just by the rough. But this far away from the rough with the ball guideline is a little bit too much, which is going to make my ball miss a lift. The important one we do have a little bit of headwind is that we do need to use more topspin. And that's not often that we're using topspin in the golden shot. But here is what we're going to do with that. So when we do have a crosswind with headwind, we're going to use two and a smidge, like 2.2 bar topspin. Something like that when it's more, more towards crosswind when it's more uh, than, than it is towards headwind. If it is more towards headwind than crosswind, then we're going to use two and a half. Like this for an example. Here I would like to play with two and a half bar topspin, as it is more towards headwind than it is towards crosswind. So look at the landing position here now. Now we're going to use a smidge of the yellow ring inside the, the rough there to the left. You can see I'm backing up a little bit as well, which is not really what we want. We do want to have a little bit further up, but kind of like when we do have such a low wind as we're having here, so shouldn't be making that big of a difference, but to be able to replicate the situations all the time, we do need to follow the structure, which I'm not doing here. So, smidge more up than we, I would be happy with that. Because you can see here, we're actually coming in short. Even though the ball rolls a lot in towards the red ring, but we do need that little, like, that little, little extra uh, to be able to um, get up there. A two and a half bar top spin. The only difference here is that we're using a slightly wrong landing position for, for our shot. So, it is super important that we use a two and a half bars top spin when we do have more crosswind, sorry, more headwind than we do have crosswind. And once again, if we do have more crosswind than we do have headwind, then we're using 2.2 bars top spin instead. Now we do have 5.1, pretty low uh, tailwind here. And once again, max side spin to the left. Uh, one and a half, a little bit less than one and a half bar top spin would be good here like one and a half is good but most likely gonna come in a little bit hot sometimes especially with a higher wind so here it's like what your gut tells you like it's somewhere around 1.5 to get it close here we are just as we wanted to uh, with 1.8 per ring we get it to bounce there and we roll we roll we roll once again we're coming a little bit short and a little bit uh, much too much to the left and i think at least when watching this one afterwards, I think I do kind of play this shot as we would be having much higher wind than we're actually having. So of course, if you do have like a 4 or a 5 mile per hour wind, and then you have a 7, of course that ball is going to react differently when it comes to uh, um, like the speed the ball will have or like the, the less speed the ball will have in, in if so crosswind. So look at the... Now we take a look at crosswind here, right to left. I'm using too uh, little of the ball guideline close to the rough there on the right. We do need to have the ball guideline just there by the rough to be able to get the correct type of bounce, which is most likely going to make our ball miss to the left. We get it to bounce, coming in here. But you can see here, it's a nice shot though. I'm not uh, taking away that, but we're still a little bit too much to the left and once again a little bit short so we need to pump up that top spin a little bit there and just make sure that we're getting the correct landing position for our shot 
7.4. Now we do have a more as a stronger win. So I'm going to use one and a smidge. A 1.2 bar top spin. Not really one and a half. Yellow ring just there by the rough as a start. Then we're going to drag it out there to the left. So we do get a little bit of the yellow ring inside the rough. And you can see I have this one pointed towards the red ring there to the left. And you know, it's kind of like to get that feeling on, on how the ball is going, like how the ball, ball guy line is going to point. It's kind of a little bit of a feeling adjustment there in the end. We do have a reference like approximately two squares, but it's also hard to see when we are going to uh, play that shot. You know, we can see here this one coming as very, very nicely. A little bit too much to the right, but that's most likely due to the little bit strong wind. So we should have pushed it a little bit more there to the left. But the thing that I like is that we do have the speed correct. We do have the we do have the top spin correct here in in terms of or at least we're getting it very very close. We've got some apocalypse cards there. Unfortunately, that we uh, we aren't needing those. One and a half bar top spin, and look at the ball guy line here now. Now we are going to look for the correct place here. You can see here, Bolga line just there by the rough, as I shown in the example before we uh, started to watch the shots. And then we're going to adjust the 6.9 win, and we're going to play this one for 4.1, like 4.1, 3.9, something like that, or like around 4, I would say, is going to be good here for this shot. Max side spin to the left all the time, all the time. You can see here we're coming in and we're gonna bounce and it's gonna kick ourselves in very, very nicely. And we are super close to get this ball in the hole. And of course, you know, another day that would have been a hole in one. But that was a nice shot. We're getting there, you know. And you can see here crosswind once again, 1.5 bar top spin is what I'm using in crosswind together with max side spin to the left. <laughs> Now we do have two more shots to go. First, we do have like straight headwind. And a straight headwind, we are going to have to add more topspin. Three and a half bar topspin when we do have a straight headwind. And now we're going to aim straight for the pin, as I shown before the videos as well, uh, to get to aim. We do want to aim to try to visualize so we can aim straight at the pin. And the reason why, like, people may wonder, or like, you may wonder, why do I use side spin when we are basically straight headwind? Or straight tailing for that matter. It's once again to take a, stay away from the rough that we do have on the left. As it's very easy to just bounce our ball in the rough. And then get our get it in to roll short. And we're going to miss all the rings. Very close. And we're getting the yellow ring here as well. Which is nice with headwind. And that straight headwind. So three and a half bar backspin if you do have a straight headwind. And of course if you do have like a five mile per hour straight headwind. You take off a little bit. As the wind is not going to compress the ball guy line. As much as a seven mile per hour wind is going to do. So okay last but not least we do have <coughs> a try. And now it's time to get the hole in one. That's at least what I want to. 5.8 more headwind than we do have a crosswind. Max side spin to the left. Two and a half bar top spin is what we're looking for. I'm using a little bit too much here, but that's going to be okay. But you're gonna notice that I'm coming in a little bit too hot. Now we're going to look for the ball guideline as well. We have the yellow ring just a smidge inside the rough there. On the left with the ball guideline, look here how straight it is towards like the inside of the left side of the red ring in terms of distance there. And then we're going to adjust our rings to make it probably 3.2 rings and we're gonna hit it perfect and you can see I'm used like 2.7 in top spin 2.5 would have been absolutely perfect but I will take this as well even though we come in a little bit hot uh, no I thought we had that one. Oh, I thought we had that one but 2.5 we needed 2.5 there in uh, in top spin instead of 2.7 super close though we're getting it closer to the hole in one and i actually thought that was gonna go in when i saw the adjustment but now okay max side spin and we're going to use two and a half bar top spin not two not 2.7 but once again i'm using 2.7 here why yeah why once and we're looking for the landing position with the yellow ring just a smidge inside the rough there on the top not much and we can say now, 
as I missed there to the left, I try to get it more closer towards the pin, but still giving myself like a two square, one and a half, two squares to the left of the pin in terms of over adjustment. <laughs> Max size spin as always, we over adjust the 30%. And we bounce, and we bounce. Can we roll this one? Coming in a little bit hot, but boom. We got it in the end, that was nice. So we got the hole in one in the end. This is going to be a tough part, uh, tough part three to make uh, make hole in ones on. But if you do follow the advice that I've given you here, all from landing position adjustment, then it's going to help you big time. I'm going to summarize here in the end. First, first, first. Medium distance with a 30% over adjustment is also 1.8 per ring. Same thing, you decide what you wanna, uh, how you want to, to adjust. If we do have any type of win, we go with as much left side spin as possible. We go max, like, which is four and a half bars. Then we're going to apply in straight tailwind, one bar top spin. If we do have a tailwind slash crosswind, then we're going to play with 1.2, 1.3 bar top spin. If we do have a crosswind, 1.5 bar top spin could be 1.7 and something like that as well. Depending on like how the wind angle is going to be, you decide, but around 1.5 bar top spin minimum. Then we do have, uh, when it comes to headwind and crosswind, then we're going to play that one with two and a half bar top spin necessary due to the headwind there and then when we do have a straight head we're going to play with three and a half bar top spin of course if the wind is going to be very low or very high you know you will have to adjust with your feeling a little bit and add or subtract the necessary spin but the spin adjustment giving you is what i've been trying out is what works and even though we're going for the hole in one we're going to work for being as close as possible towards the pin because that is what bringing us a chest or two Right to left, wind. Then we're going to use half of the red ring inside the rough there with the ball guy line pointing straight there at the rough or just inside there on the fairway by the rough. When we do have a wind left to right, even though we have a cross, like a tailwind crosswind, we're still gonna look for the same type of position with the yellow ring, just a smidge inside. You can see here that the blue line is tr is to try to show and to visualize that we're going to have a little bit of the uh, yellow ring inside the rough there on top. With the ball guy line pointing around two squares to the left of the pin. Last but not least, straight wind do we have here, and then we see the yellow ring should just be by the rough there. And you know, I normally use and show one landing position and tell you to tweak, but I wanted to make it more, uh, more detailed this time around, and I hope it will help you out when it comes to crushing this golden shot. Let me know in the comment section below what you got in your chest, and also did you upgrade <coughs> any of the clubs? How many berserkers did you get? Let me know in the comment section below. So, uh, thank you so much for watching. If you did like the video, take your time, hit thumbs up before you go. So, good luck in the golden show!